Hello, hello! Today we're going to take a look at the Beechcraft King Air 350, also known as the Beechcraft Super King Air. So this is a twin turboprop aircraft which started life as a Super King Air 200, however the 350 model is bigger and has more powerful engine. This allows it to carry up to 13 passengers plus baggage. This plane is also a popular choice among military forces as it's an ideal plane for training purposes. Not only training, but it ha has also seen active service as an intelligence and reconnaissance aircraft. So let's jump in and take a look. Now you'll notice that some of these instruments look different. This plane kind of marks the transition away from small personal aircraft to more passenger focused ones. And you'll see this in how the cockpit is arranged. So what I'm going to do for this panel is start on the left and work my way across in stages. So in the top left, nice and simple, you have your ILS marker lights. Below that is a multi-purpose instrument. By default, it's a digital clock and outside air temperature gauge. However, if you hit the top button, you can change the temperature to an electricity readout so you can check the electrical system. If you hit the bottom left button, you can change the clock to a stopwatch and then you can control that stopwatch with the bottom right button. Beneath the clock there, you have a turn coordinator gauge but you'll actually see another more practical one in a moment. Moving over, you can see that we have an airspeed indicator. Beneath that, you have an ADF and secondary VOR indicator. And then at the bottom, you have a DME panel. Next up, at the top, we have a row of buttons for other 2D panels. Now, you'll probably need to use these more often in this plane. The next main instrument is an electric attitude indicator and that little bar with the black ball in the bottom is a turn coordinator which in my opinion would be easier to watch rather than the one on the left. Underneath that you have a horizontal situation indicator. Now while it looks a little different this is simply an electric glass cockpit version of the HSI and it works exactly the same as the Bendix King one I did in a video a little while ago. Moving across again at the top we have our autopilot sorry autopilot altitude panel so if you want to hold an altitude you would dial it in here underneath that you have the altimeter and then next up you have several buttons all relating to autopilot functions so when you click on these buttons they'll light up to show that it's working and then finally at the bottom you have your vertical speed indicator and then finally on the right hand side you have two columns of instruments for each engine very similar to the Beechcraft Baron now across the top you have a couple more indicators. You have a master warning and a master caution light. If you click on these you'll see that they open up two annunciator panels for both buttons. Moving along from there you have two auto feather indicators. So this is when the engines automatically feather the propeller pitch which happens during landing I believe. And then finally on the right you have a couple of engine fire lights and fire extinguisher handles. So what I'm going to do just now is jump live into the game and show off some of the other important 2D panels. Okay, so here we are in the plane. So let's have a look at some of these 2D panels here. So some of these you've seen before. You've got the checklist, you've got air traffic control. Here you've got the magnetic compass. Very standard. Now here you've got the throttle quadrant. Now you'll notice that each of the uh, levers here are all have black handles but there's the same levers that you've seen before so you've got your throttle on the left propeller pitch in the middle and then uh, fuel mixture on the right hand side there and again you've got two handles for each uh, for each engine there uh, this icon here is the map which I'm not going to open because it pauses the game now the next change here is the radio panel so you can see here that uh, you have your COM1, COM2, NAV1 and NAV2 but you don't have uh, a standby frequency for either any of these so all of these frequencies are all active frequencies and you just simply go and you change the active frequency sort of live so you don't have to worry about changing the standby and then making it the active though the one frequency that you see here is always going to be active and then at the bottom here you've got your DM uh, no sorry ADF uh, radio and your transponder there a uh, little satellite dish is your GPS it's the GPS 500s that you've all seen before nice and simple here you have your fuel gauges so those pop up down at the bottom there so you've got left tank, right tank and then you've got a switch for cross feed so 
Um, you can control that from there. Now this is probably one of the most significant differences. This is the IFR panel. So if you click on that, you see that it moves everything up and it enables a few switches down here. So let's have a quick look at these. So you've got all of your electronics in here. You've got your auto feather there. You've got engine ignition, anti-ice and pitot heat. You've got your external lights there. Uh, landing gear with indicator lights your flaps controls and then also just above here you've got your propeller sync button and a little indicator there which is not moving because both the engines are running at idle at the moment and then the last panel here is very simple it's just your trim controls there so there you go so that's the, uh, the full 2D panel there so you can see here in the virtual cockpit view that the cockpit looks a lot more filled out both pilots have a set of instruments to work with, however the left seat captain has the engine cages and a few more switches underneath the yoke. So that about covers things for the King Air. In the next video we're going to move on to jet aircraft with the Learjet 45. Hope to see you there, many thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.